right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Tonight, two children shot to death in a matter of hours. That's something that no parent wants to go through or should have to go through. I mean, that's just devastating to say the least. Why one of the grandparents is behind bars. Plus, Boeing expansion. The pitch from the aerospace company to St. Louis County about expanding operations near Lambert Airport. A weather first, weather alert for thunderstorms Wednesday. A few stronger storms and downpours are expected. It's all quiet tonight in St. Louis, but you want to be on alert tomorrow. Good evening. I'm Mike Bush and I'm Ann Allred. Some areas could see two rounds of strong storms, and that's why we are in a weather alert tonight. And Weather First Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is tracking the timing. Scott and that is a big concern for us. The timing on this tomorrow will play out and have a big impact on what we end up seeing as the course of the day wears on. Right now, things are relatively quiet across the area. We've had a couple of spot showers off to the north and northeast of St. Louis. In fact, we look to the northeast and there you see a few showers, a couple of rumbles of thunder. No big deal, right? So that's passing us by, but this is coming our way. Pretty impressive disturbance coming out of Colorado tonight, and it's already starting to swing in across Nebraska into far western Kansas, and we've had some pretty intense thunderstorms with that, and that energy is heading our way. So midday storms tomorrow is what we're thinking. Late morning in through the midday hours, early afternoon. That's wave one, and then another round of potential evening thunderstorms. That may be more focused to the south of St. Louis. Gusty winds will be in a few storms, but not all of them. Right now, we're not looking at this being a widespread severe weather event, although in southern Missouri, the risk is higher and there will be some dry time tomorrow, especially first thing in the morning. And then again, after that first wave tapers off and shifts east for a time during the afternoon, that'll be our recovery period. And once we see that recovery, then we'll know where we're going into the evening hours. But just remain alert tomorrow. Make sure you have a way to get those warnings. And of course, and that means the five on your side weather app. And remember, great point. You can get the latest weather first forecast anytime. Just text the word weather to 314-425-5355. We'll send it straight to your phone. Tonight, we're learning new details about one of St. Louis's biggest employers' plans to expand. Boeing is hoping to get approval from St. Louis Lambert International Airport to make its $2 billion investment a reality. Five on your side's Brent Solomon is live at the airport now with what he's learning. Well, Mike, today Boeing pitched its plan to county leaders. If the company gets its way, it will be able to expand onto the airport's property. But it takes approval for that. This is key to significantly growing our advanced manufacturing capability at the site. Randall Gelzer um, with Boeing says his company has big plans. The goal is to expand onto 154 acres of land located here on the site of St. Louis Lambert International. If the county gives the green light, Boeing's $1.8 billion investment would create hundreds of new jobs, paying on average $90,000. This will allow us to compete for those next franchise programs in St. Louis. At a county committee meeting Tuesday, support from community partners. It is not often that you see competitive projects of this size considering St. Louis. The creation of 500 new high paying full time jobs, which will build on the existing 16,000 employees. Boeing sits in our backyard. Uh, they share our runway with us every day. The head of St. Louis Lambert International telling county leaders Boeing's ask aligns with the airport's goals to increase foot traffic and beautify the campus. Taking the underdeveloped, underutilized land that we own and turning it into something to enhance the area around the airport. Take the, the eyesore out of there, take down the old decrepit buildings, and we'll see bright new facilities on our campus at our airport. One person spoke against the measure, a taxpayer who's concerned about big businesses like Boeing getting subsidies. He wants this matter to go to the voters instead of to county leaders. By the way, no decision tonight, but tomorrow the airport commission will take up this matter. We'll keep you posted. Live at St. Louis Lambert International, Brent Solomon. Back to you. New tonight, smoking will soon be banned in St. Louis County parks, and that includes both tobacco and marijuana. 
The county council passed an update to the county's clean air code tonight. It was prompted by Missouri's legalization of recreational marijuana. Smoking and vaping will also not be allowed outside county-run buildings. The votes are in tonight from today's special election in St. Louis City. Residents in the St. Louis Hills neighborhood passed Prop S with 55% of the vote. The tax hike will provide more neighborhood cameras and patrols. It will cost residents about $15 a month. Two children in the St. Louis region shot and killed in a matter of hours. A seven-year-old boy in Berkeley and a five-year-old girl in Belleville. Our Laura Barczewski talked with gun safety advocates who say they are tired of hearing about these tragedies. Yes, and they are. Advocates tell me this is all happening too often, and they want to continue to push parents and families to lock up their guns so that this doesn't happen to anyone else. They had so much life left to live. I have a five-year-old daughter, and uh, just thinking about or imagining my daughter, you know, dying at the age of five, being shot at the age of five, and dying from, you know, a gunshot wound or gun violence, I mean, that's devastating. So I think about the families, what they're going through. The Belleville and Berkeley communities are grieving after two children were shot and killed just hours apart. At least 15% or so that are accidental, and honestly, one is too many. Um, and so it, it's it's tragic, it's terrible, and it's something that needs to be addressed. Police say seven-year-old Darnell Macon shot himself when he was left alone inside his grandfather's truck in Berkeley. He found the loaded gun in between the seats. His grandfather has now been charged. Gail Wexler it's, with it's Moms really Demand tragic. Action says it's um, so tragic. We at Moms Demand call these unintentional shootings. They're really not accident because there are things that parents and guardians can do to securely store their firearms, whether it's in your home or in your car. 35 minutes away in Belleville, police say five-year-old Dariah Latham was shot and killed at her home near West Main and 88th Street. A car was seen rushing her to the hospital where she died. Community advocates in Illinois met with area law enforcement to try and help put a stop to these kinds of tragedies. We need all levels of government to help us with the safe boxes for guns, the education for, of guns, you know, stronger gun laws in, in, in surrounding states because that affects us. Wexler says they really want parents and guardians to take advantage of free resources available now so they don't have to grieve the loss of their child because of a gun. You really need to keep your guns unloaded and either lock with a gun lock or put in a lockbox separate from ammunition. You can text the word LOCKS to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you a list of places where you can get a gun lock for free. Tonight, we know the name of the woman who was killed by a piece of debris that flew through her windshield. 21-year-old Jalen Rhodes was driving on Lindbergh in Florissant last week when another driver hit a road sign. Part of it went through Rhodes' windshield and killed her. The other driver wasn't hurt and stayed on the scene. Tonight, a man is facing charges accused of pointing a gun at a woman who didn't thank him for holding a door open for her. 36-year-old Vaughn Spivey is charged with unlawful use of a weapon. The incident happened back on July 24th at a mobile station on North Hanley in Berkeley. No one was physically harmed. President Biden and former President Trump were both on the road today on opposite sides of the country. Each are combating issues that could threaten their 2024 campaigns. Preserving these lands is good not only for Arizona, but for the planet. It's good for the economy. It's good for the soul of the nation. President Biden talked about his climate initiatives at the Grand Canyon. This as he battles low approval ratings and a struggling economy, controversies involving his son Hunter, and questions about his age. Former President Trump was in New Hampshire. He's facing three indictments with a fourth possible this week. Former President Trump denies all charges, calling it a political witch hunt. This is all about election interference. I'm sorry, I won't be able to go to Iowa today. I won't be able to go to New Hampshire today because I'm sitting in a courtroom on because his attorney general charged me. Now, with all of his legal troubles, our Verify team has been asked if Donald Trump, if he's reelected, could pardon himself. Here's Brandon Lewis with the answer. On August 3rd, former President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty in his third criminal indictment, his second in federal court. The first was in New York state court. Several Verify viewers reached out to ask if Trump could possibly pardon himself if he's reelected as president. So let's verify. 
Could Trump pardon himself for any federal or state convictions if he's reelected as president? Our sources are the U.S. Constitution, a ruling by the Supreme Court, the Department of Justice, the Brennan Center for Justice, and three constitutional law experts. For the federal charges, the answer is maybe, because there is no clearly stated law or legal precedent, meaning this hasn't happened before. The Constitution gives the president broad power to issue pardons for federal crimes. The only explicit restriction that the Founding Fathers included was that a president cannot pardon themselves in cases of impeachment. I don't think that they have ever considered or imagined a situation where the president would need to pardon himself. Um, but here we are. The closest we've come was in 1974, just days before President Richard Nixon resigned. The DOJ issued a memo that said, under the fundamental rule that no one may be a judge in his own case, the president cannot pardon himself. However, that opinion was never tested in court because Nixon resigned. The question is, is it enforceable? And the courts would have to decide that. And ultimately, that case is going to wind its way through the United States Supreme Court. Former President Trump would probably be in pretty good standing with the United States Supreme Court. As for Trump's indictment in New York on state criminal charges, all of our sources agree that, no, Trump cannot pardon himself in that case because the Constitution only gives him the power to issue pardons for federal crimes. New York's Constitution says that only the governor can grant pardons or clemency to people and only after they're convicted. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. What can we verify for you? Send an email. The email address is verify at ksdk.com. Punches thrown, chairs tossed. A melee in Montgomery, Alabama, caught on camera. It's obvious that all they wanted to do was cause a ruckus. Tonight, the charges filed in a chaotic riverfront brawl. From items to wrap up summer to things needed to get back in the classroom. Tonight, we're breaking down the best buys right now. Wednesday is a weather first weather alert day as showers and a few stronger storms march across the region caused by this disturbance out in Wyoming. An update on the timing, the threats the storms bring and when they move out. Tonight, three Alabama men face misdemeanor assault charges just days after this video of a riverfront brawl went viral. Tonight, we're learning more about what led up to the chaotic scene this weekend. It all started when a worker confronted a man on a private pontoon boat to make room in a dock space reserved for a city-owned riverboat. Things quickly turned physical and got out of hand. Uh, the co-captain was doing his job. Uh, he was simply trying to move the boat and just enough to where the, the cruise ship can park uh, safely in its, in its identified location. However, uh, it quickly escalated into a fistic encounter. From the video, the fight appears to be largely along racial lines, but police say as of now, there is not enough evidence to find the criteria of a hate crime or inciting a riot. A new option tonight for area mothers in crisis. Missouri opened up its first safe haven baby box today. Its secure incubator is located at Melville Fire Station number two. That's off Telegraph. And moms can leave their newborns, their infants under 30 days old inside. And an alarm will alert first responders, a silent alarm. In Missouri, parents can permanently give up a newborn up to 45 days old without prosecution as long as it is done safely. A consumer alert tonight for Medicaid recipients in Missouri. Your personal information may have been breached. The Missouri Department of Social Services says there was a cyber attack on a third party vendor. The information involved includes names, client numbers, date of birth, eligibility status, and medical claims. People affected are urged to monitor and protect their credit. Tonight, the largest Mega Millions jackpot ever is up for grabs. The prize has swelled to $1.58 billion, and the winning numbers were just drawn in the last 15 minutes. They are 13, 19, 20, 32, 33, and the Mega Ball, 14. If you missed out on Amazon Prime Day last month, you'll have another shot at big bargains. Today, the e-commerce giant announced it will hold Prime Big Deal Days in October. No exact dates have been given, but Amazon's hoping to grab consumers who want to get an early start on their holiday shopping. Although summer may be winding down, your chances to save money this month will only be rising. Tonight, Consumer Report shares how to save big in August.
August is all about back-to-school and Labor Day sales. Consumer Reports tracks the prices of many of its top-tested products all year long, so it knows exactly when they go on deep discount. Here are the top products to look out for in this month's best time to buy. This month, you can expect back-to-school sales on tech items like computers, tablets, and printers. The end of August also signals early Labor Day sales, where you can find deals geared toward seasonal items like grills as well as vacuums. Set your student up for success this year with a new laptop. The Apple MacBook Air 13-inch is as low as $749.99 at Amazon and Best Buy. CR says this is the lowest price they've seen on this MacBook and that its battery lasted 12 and a half hours in its web browsing tests. Skip the ink refills and go with a laser printer for all your studying needs. This HP LaserJet printer is now $89 at Amazon and Walmart. While this model only prints in black and white, it offers outstanding overall performance, great functionality, and low print cost. And for your college students, cook up noodles to your heart's content with an affordable microwave. This microwave oven from Commercial Chef is $76.49 at JCPenney. And whether it's for Labor Day, camping, or tailgating, get a grill you can take with you on the go. This portable grill from Coleman is as low as $249.99 at Walmart. And finally, a stick vac that won't break the bank. This Hoover One Power Blade Max is as low as $184.98 at Amazon. CR says this cordless stick vacuum performs well in its pet hair, bare floor, and edge cleaning tests. Round out your summer with great savings. Consumer Reports also points out that dehumidifiers, freezers, robotic vacuums, and wireless routers are all on sale this month. A St. Louis original is celebrating another St. Louis original in an amazing way. Eckert's Millstadt Fun Farm announced the theme of this year's corn maze. It celebrates the 150th anniversary of kindergarten. The first public kindergarten in the U.S. opened at the De Pere School in Carondelet in 1873. The maze will be open every Saturday and Sunday. That'll start on September 9th. I did not know that. Did you I, know that? No, I had no idea. Very cool. Well, Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joins us now with the Weather First forecast, and he knows everything about the weather tomorrow, and it could be a bumpy ride. Uh, yeah, it could be a bumpy ride, but for most of us, it probably won't be. But. I don't have all the answers. You know, I, I wish I did. Uh, we are quiet at Lambert right now. Temperatures have been in the mid 80s for highs. They've settled back to around 80 now. And if you're over to the northeast of St. Louis, there's still a couple of little spritzes and sprinkles near Mulberry Grove, heading maybe just west of Vandalia. You might catch a brief downpour. That's really it. It's just those little isolated showers and thunderstorms off to the northeast of us that we've been seeing linger here. Just don't want to go away, but they're on the way out. This is on the way in coming across Wyoming. Quite a bundle of energy here that's going to pull out of Wyoming. It's already instigated a bunch of storms across parts of Nebraska, down into Colorado, now into western Kansas. This effectively is our weather maker for tomorrow. As those storms start to slide east and southeast, they'll continue to grow through the night with additional development down to the southwest of us. This is all going to be sliding towards St. Louis. Not for the rush hour tomorrow morning, but later in the morning and through the early afternoon hours. So that first wave mid morning to early afternoon. It is a weather first weather alert day Wednesday. The second wave is later in the day into the evening hours and there's a conditional severe weather threat, meaning it depends. The ingredients seem to be there, but they don't necessarily all line up together and we're not seeing all the ingredients fully in place, if that makes any sense. So, you know, we're, we're waiting to see just how much we heat up, especially tomorrow afternoon. We're still 78 right now. Very little wind. Dew points at 65. 88 was the high today. We were dry today. We will not be dry tomorrow. Part of the day will be dry when it starts out, but for most of us, we will get some rain in here at a pretty decent amount. Temperature 60s to around 70 out the door. Here's what will happen as we go through the day tomorrow. Showers and thunderstorms will start spreading in towards 10 11 o'clock from the west. Now the heaviest activity is likely to be to the southwest of St. Louis with this morning action and as it moves to the east it tends to fade a bit. This is where things get interesting tomorrow late in the day into the evening hours, especially south of St. Louis. Some of those storms may have more fuel and may be able to generate more wind. Wind seems to be the greatest threat that we would deal with out of this storm prediction centers a little 
uh, gung ho here on severe weather chances, especially for southeast Missouri. We do think there is a chance we'll see some strong winds out of a few of those thunderstorms, but the better chances for seeing more intense thunderstorms overall and more of them would be across southern Missouri, far southern portions of Illinois. To be honest, we'll be lucky if we get to 82 for the high temperature on your Wednesday. Some of us will stay in the 70s all day. 86 on Thursday should be a quiet day as the clouds decrease Friday night and again along about Sunday night. We may have a few scattered showers and storms, but otherwise there's a lot of dry time on the way for the weekend. All right, Scott, thank you. Frank is back. What's coming up? And the Cardinals are 16 games under 500. What has happened tonight? Another doozy in Tampa, but we do have Tory Holt and Isaac Bruce on this sportscast. So we have that going for us, which is nice. The Sports Desk is sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. So there's a little bit of a debate out there about should the Cardinals even throw Adam Wainwright any more this season with his earned run average of almost eight? Heck yes. What are the Cardinals playing for? To finish ahead of the Rockies and not have the worst record in the league? Keep trying for 200. Heck yes. Tonight they wasted another good performance by Miles Michaelis in Tampa. One guy who won't be denied is Nolan Arenado. Homer number 24, RBI 80, and he Scott Rollins it after every homer, running hard and being humble. Michaelis, seven innings, five Ks, two earned runs. But for some reason, after 80 pitches, they took him out. He's 6'5", 215. He's not made of porcelain, please. And it didn't work out well for Andre Palante. The Rays scored three runs in the eighth. They win the game 4-2. The Raves have beaten the Cardinals nine out of 10 times. We are about a month away from the Ascension Charity Golf Classic. The golf is second, the charities are first. After this year's tourney at Norwood Hills, they will have raised over $4 million for the Urban League, the Boys and Girls Club, and Mary Grove. Today at the Legends Breakfast, Isaac Bruce and Tory Holt were the headliners. A big crowd on hand helping to raise all that money. Now the tourney is a champion's event, so you have to be 50 years old or older. Tiger Woods will turn 48 in December, and he has chatted with Nick Ragone from Ascension. He asked, when's your event? I said, September. He goes, that's great for my allergies because August is bad. He loved Bell Reeve. He kept saying over and over again, 2018 at Bell Reeve was the single best experience he's ever had. Now, Tiger's a reticent person. He doesn't talk a lot as a pro. And he said, when I'm 50, he said it twice to be frank, when I'm 50, get my cart ready. And so, and I spoke to him afterwards, I spoke to Commissioner Monaghan, and he goes, oh, Tiger's serious. When he turns 50, you know, he struggles walking, Frank, but when it comes to hitting the ball, he could still hit it. So when he gets that cart, he's going to want to compete and win. That would be so cool. Hey, after the breakfast, Tory Holt and Isaac Bruce played in a Pro-Am event at Glen Echo Country Club. They love golf, but they are relatively new to the sport. In terms of their main sport, well, I asked each of them what skill they appreciated in the other. Well, he, he catch a football, running through guys and, and, and holding the ball like this. I'm like, you gotta have mitts. He was explosive, um, confident, um, you know, singing ability, he can keep that. <laughs> it's two alpha males that were very confident, um, very matter of fact about their craft and really wanting to work and be the best daily. So that's what I saw from Isaac. This Five on Your Side St. Louis City SC coverage is sponsored by Together Credit Union. Six players from City SC visited Children's Hospital. These kids are fighters, and these soccer players brought a little joy into their lives. They signed autographs, took pictures, and just hung out with these courageous kids. We do a lot of stuff on the field, but this is really where I feel like we can kind of come alive and, you know, hopefully bring some joy to some kids going through a hard time. So we love being here. And that will do it in sports. All right, Frank, and we'll be right back. We're following breaking news out of North St. Louis County. Three blackjack firefighters are in the hospital after this pumper truck overturned. This is live pictures. This is the scene near Old Halls Ferry Road. It's near Country Club Court. This crash happened about 90 minutes ago. You can see firefighters are still on the scene and the vehicle is still there. Officials say a car pulled in front of this fire engine. 
We're told the firefighters' injuries are not life-threatening. A reminder that tomorrow is a weather alert day, and Scott has one less check of the forecast. And it's an orange alert day, which means, yes, there's the potential of impactful weather, but not necessarily life-threatening weather tomorrow. Now, there will be some thunderstorms that move in towards the late morning, early afternoon hours. Then there'll be a little bit of a break and then another chance later in the day. Gusty winds and some downpours seem to be the biggest threat. And honestly, the greatest severe weather threat looks like it's across far southern Missouri and southern portions of Illinois. Anthony will be here to get you started bright and early at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning with an update. And there you have it, five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Start your day with today in St. Louis for the latest on the weather from 4 to 7 a.m. And have a great tomorrow.